Hey, what is up? Anybody here? Imagine both Revshell and Netmires taking their Sunday off to watch me screw about on Twitch, huh? Who would believe? Who would believe? Yeah, I made my... <clears throat> Let's see, get the cam on here. So I think I made my sacrifice. I guess we'll see. Hey! So, uh... Feel free to tell me if the audio is, is okay. I don't want the background music to be too loud. I just need something to fill the mirrors. <laughs> you deserve it. Well, if... I'm just saying, if this demo worked like it did... Uh, 15 20 minutes ago then I know this is gonna be pretty sweet to be honest uh, I wasn't expecting it to quote work this good uh, we'll see started a bit earlier today so want to make sure everybody who's on the follow list got a chance to opportunity to jump in uh, okay so today I'm running, so this is going to be interesting, I'm running four VMs at the same time, while streaming. Let's look at the RAM usage here. And I'm I'm actually not maxing memory, what the, so I, disclaimer I guess, I do have 64 gigs of memory. But I have dialed down the VMs a bit to, to be able to, uh, you know, if, if each, yeah, they're only running like four gigs each, so it should work fine. So let me uh, talk you through this setup. If I may, so we got four different VMs, ru uh, VMs running. Uh, we got the uh, like the I guess the victim computer, the target computer, uh, which is like a Windows 10 computer, a domain jo domain joined to this little domain controller on a domain called the JIT Corp. Uh, these both of these are obviously in the same subnet, and they're. Uh, it's like they're they're in the they're in my VMware subnet, and then the two other machines, which are the Windows attacking host and the Linux, in this case Kali attacking host, are on my actual local home network. So the VM stuff, so the the lab, like the AD lab, can reach out to me, but I can't di directly reach the domain controller from neither of the attack machines without pivoting. That's sort of what I wanted. Uh, so in short, today I'm going to be going over how powerful a SOX proxy actually is uh, and how you could uh, forward or how you could use a Windows host with something called Proxifier over SOX proxy to basically get a Windows attached, uh, like basically in almost every way get your computer on the same, like your Windows client machine on the same network as the target, uh, right? Almost, almost. There's a, there's an almost in there for sure. But it's pretty cool. It works pretty good. And then after I've done that, I'm going to go through some of my favorite shop tools to show you how you could uh, use them like effective, effectively, efficiently. Uh, okay, so first of all, we need to compromise this, uh, this poor uh, Windows 10 machine. Uh, so I'm going to uh, start up a listener here. So I'll just uh, add the listener. Yeah, I'm using Cobalt Strike because, in my experience, their uh, their uh, Sox, reverse Sox proxy implementation is by far the most stable. Some people might not agree, but uh, I would argue, at least compared to you know the open source alternatives, Posh, Empire, Covenant, uh, Cobalt Strike's reverse Sox proxy is pretty darn stable. It's pretty darn good. So I started our listener, and then we need to generate a partial stager. Also, no disclaimer, never use built-in Cobalt, uh, Cobalt Strike stagers ever. You will get fingerprinted uh, quick as, yeah, super quickly. Don't do that. Uh, but I'm going to do it because I'm on local network. And I don't give a f I'm going to copy out only this part right here. Um, I'm going to copy that off screen. This is basically a part of the partial stager. And then I'll go over to the attack uh, victim machine and I'll head over to amc.fail and just grab myself a quick uh, amc bypass. 
if you don't know about amc.fail it's a project of mine that recently was migrated to to full uh, js so it does in it's pretty cool actually it does in browser full uh, obfuscation of pre predefined snippets in powershell only you only using js so when I, it's super quick as well super snappy and it doesn't cost me anything anymore so basically i need a way to patch out amc because uh, defender is running so I'm going to grab uh, any of these uh, ANSI patches and open up PowerShell, just place it right in there. And it doesn't complain, so it's patched. And then I'll just drop my uh, uh, Cobalt Strike PowerShell stager right in there. And then we should have a shell. And that's how easy it is to get a, <laughs> like no profile, no nothing, just vanilla Cobalt Strike uh, beacon on the Windows Defender. Just patch ANSI and use the PowerShell stager. It's, uh, you wouldn't believe me if I told you it was 2021. And then we're going to go sleep zero to make it interactive. Uh, and it's going to take about a minute before it calls back for the first time and goes interactive. Um, yeah, let's just wait for that, I guess. And again, you could use any other, you know, Empire Covenant bosh whatever it doesn't really matter as long as they have some sort of reverse sox proxy functionality i i think both of them all three of them actually uses sharp socks which is more than adequate so a couple of seconds now which you go into interactive there we go and then i uh it will call back as fast as it can so i will start uh, what's called a sock server i'll do it on port 5555 and then normally if you were on uh, like normally what you would do with socks proxies is that you would uh, define uh, the socks proxy in proxy chains right so the 555 and then you could do like proxy change crap map execute smb and then you would pivot your your linux tools over this and that works fine uh crap map execute is specifically slow uh, when pivoting over but it works but what i want to do is i want to run all my fancy c sharp tools but i don't want to use execute assembly for whatever reason maybe the edr solution on the machine is freaking insane and i i can't get away with you know spawning a new process and injecting and uh, uh dotnet runtime into it it doesn't work uh so i, I basically with the socks proxy i want to be able to run most of the common tools i usually do on engagements uh, so what we'll do is that we head over to our Windows attack machine and we'll open that PowerShell prompt. I think it has to be elevated. I'm local admin, so it shouldn't really matter, but it has to be elevated. Oops. Oh, what did I do? This is all incident stuff. There we go. And I'll just bring up uh, my SSH forward command. And what I'll, what, what I'll do is that I'll connect to the uh, Kali machine with SSH via PowerShell. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, <laughs> oh, he noticed. The rest of us noticed. Anyway, so we'll start this reverse uh, forwarding SSH uh, portal, tunnel, call it whatever. Uh, and this will basically allow this Windows machine to use that exact same Sox proxy. And then here comes the other thing, Proxifier. If you haven't heard of it, go grab it. So Proxifier is. Uh, I've used both me and Aldvar have used Proxifier uh, in the past, but he showcased a part of this method uh, in one of his recent blog posts, uh, AD Explorer on engagements, which you should. Proxifier is a bar bargain. Yeah, I definitely have a license, which you should totally read, by the way. Hello, Olaf. Welcome. Uh, great blog post by him. Basically, why enumerate AD all the time if you can just grab a freaking snapshot? Hey, Alexander. Uh, right, so he basically uses proxy fire again on the proxy pivot uh, from a beacon to grab a, grab a snapshot of the AD environment using AD Explorer, and this is awesome. But if you if you read through his uh, his um, his blog post, you notice that he doesn't use the host name; he uses the IP, and there's a very good reason for that because Sox Four infamous uh, infamously can't handle a host name resolution, but Sox Four A can. And both Cobalt and Proxifier supports that. So hopefully, if this demo goes correct, we're going to be able to do on-fly domain, domain name resolution 
uh, through the beacon, which I got I got working like 20 minutes ago. So hopefully I can recreate that. Uh, so basically, you go over to Proxy Fire. Just assuming it's proxyfire.com, yeah. And you, wow, they have an invalid. Okay, not going to comment on that. Anyway, and you download the free trial, uh, or you pay for it. Uh, the free trial is thirty-one days. Uh, the I think uh, the subscription fee is like forty. Yeah, for I'm assuming this is lifetime, forty bucks. Right. So, um, uh, yeah. So download, install that. Uh, and I fire it up. So what you're gonna do first, you're gonna fire a proxy fire, you're gonna go to profile proxy servers, you're gonna click add, and then you're going to add your local proxy uh, socks proxy host that you just forwarded. So that would be uh, local IP, uh, local host, 5555, and then socks4. And then be sure to enable this. This is the magic right here. Then click check, it passes, meaning it works, and then you click OK. Uh, no, whatever. Then we click OK. So you got your proxy added. Uh, now we got to tell Proxyfire what tra where, like what applications on the system we want to redirect traffic through, or what application we want to use the Sox proxy. So we go to Proxification Rules, and then we basically say everything. And this might sound super sketchy, but I'll, I'll come back to it why. So basically, just go anything. So this will uh, forward every user process on your entire machine through that Sox proxy. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Uh, and then here comes the secret sauce. So this will only do so much. So from the from the browser and stuff, I can reach IPs now. I can do what Albra did in his blog and reach uh, reach specific IPs. But as soon as I, I try to resolve a domain, that won't work. So if I try to resolve the DC01, like the uh, that won't work. It won't be able to resolve it. So what you do is you go to uh, advanced and then you click handle direct connections and then you go to services and other users and you do this applications run by the user on this computer and windows services and other system processes will be forwarded to your proxy and this basically uh, solves a lot of problems when you want to use say explorer to hit smb uh, smb share you can't do that unless you allow svc host to use the socks proxy or force it through so you got to enable that then you got to go to name resolution and you got to go resolve host host names through proxy do not resolve the following and then do this and if <laughs> if this worked like it did for me 20 minutes ago uh you should be able to use either mimikatz pass the hash or run as net only to get yourself an authenticated sort of semi-authenticated cmd session and then use sharp pound, Rubius, uh, sharp hosts, whatever, as long as you can give it a domain context on the network, it will be able to resolve the domain names and it should work. So let me try now. Okay, I'm a bit eager. I'm a bit nervous about this because I mean it, it worked 20 minutes ago, but I struggled to get it working. I think I have the correct combinations of settings. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to uh... wow that text chat is in the middle. Anyway. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, open an elevated uh, CMD prompt and then I'm going to run uh, run as net only and then create a new CMD session or a new CMD process that is running under the Bruce Wayne uh, account on the domain and this should work <laughs> so I'll click enter then I ask for the password I'll give it a password and just a heads up uh, this won't let you know if you uh, type the bad password if you type any password it will still spawn spawn the new process so you make sure you type the right password this has been I've been stuck on this for a while sometimes because it won't tell you the password is bad okay and then uh, you basically I, I'm gonna do another shameless plug you go over to sharp collection and you clone sharp collection so you have every favorite tool ever on your machine don't need to compile nothing um, you clone that and then basically you can just see the into the sharp collection folder let's do 4.5 any and now you should be able to do sharp hound oh my god i hope this works domain legitcorp.net 
and you should see Proxify trying to resolve that domain. There we go. There we go, it works. Fucking works. Eh, what about that, eh? And now Sharphound is dumping a domain over Sox Proxy from your attacker machine uh, and dynamically resolving the hosts. And this is so cool. Uh, because if you didn't have the whole uh, Socks4A dom 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 domain name resolution, you would have to add the IPs for every host on the network to your host's file. And that would be a much bigger pain in the ass than just, uh, you know, execute assembly on the machine. So, Sharpan obviously works, uh, if I recall correctly. Rubius, uh, Kerberos also works. I think I have to give it a domain. Yeah, I have to give it a domain. Yeah, so it works. It, it successfully connects to the LDAP and it works. And even cooler, even cooler is this. So if I go into Explorer, I do dash dash DC1. Fuck no, why not? You might have permission to network. That totally worked last time. Oh, I think I actually need to reboot Explorer. No, why doesn't that work? That totally worked in my other demo. Hmm. Her. Well, that doesn't work. Mm. Yeah, for sure. So this will basically be like plugging your VM onto the client network. So uh, getting back to this. So I got this. I got this to work earlier. I don't know why this doesn't work now. Mm. So if that works, then this should work. But yeah, so basically when you do this, it will leak absolutely everything. So I got this earlier, but I, I can't recall how I... Because if you do then look up. So what basically... Um, so what basically Proxify does is they assign you a fake IP for the domain resolution and then they ha handle it on the IP level. Yeah, no, you should definitely have a clean VM for this, 100%. So what I usually do, I have a snapshot of my VM uh, on setup and then I just revert to that snapshot and then I, I type in a host name and an account name that would match the syntax of the company I'm attacking. And then I would connect that VM up. So the VM connected doesn't like stand that as being suspicious. That would be one way to do it. That's how I do it. I just basically reverse, reverse the snapshot. Mm. But this is a bit annoying for because this should work. Hmm. Let me see if there are any other settings. No, that is the same as the one I did. This is the same. Okay, so maybe my um, cat, my must cash then. That might be it. So. Will also leak uh, Nervous and Workers Club Workers for one. Sausage machine name. So, that's a good question, actually. Would, would definitely want to look into that. I guess so, right? Because I saw, like, the spooler service is here. The SVC host is there. So, I mean... I'm, I'm gonna... I'm gonna go for a yes. Hmm. So it does annoy me a bit. So let me try to see if maybe this had something to do with... Because I did play around with ETC hosts earlier. Uh, so maybe it was cached and that was what's working, right? Because I tried this earlier to get it to work. Oh, I'm in mode, yes. Hey, hello, Cerberusek. Let's see if this works. 
Yeah, that worked. Okay. So I'm guessing it's a cache thing then. So you would be able to use LDAP to enumerate host names and then p p pick out from, you know, uh, 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 domain controllers or uh, domain servers or whatever uh, OU in the LDAP uh, search. And then you can add them to the host file and then, you know, add, uh, look them up. Uh, so you can address them like this. And then this will also work, right? So if I type in some administration creds, I should be able to access this. Sorry, so I probably need to do legit corp administrator password. I should have though. Hey. Right, so uh, since I sort of showed how you could do that, I also, I, I noted on Twitter earlier today that I started looking at sharp shares. So there's basically two different types of, of uh, there's two projects called sharp shares. And I think these are one of the things that are genuinely, uh, I obviously if I, if I get DA, um, it depends on how the how the attack path goes, right? But if I'm stuck, if I'm totally stuck, I got credentials on network, but I can't go anywhere. One of the things I'd definitely look into doing is start looking at all those file shares. People always leave stuff on the file shares, and recently I've always I've I've used the uh, you know the MDSEC blog about um, creating shortcuts that would trigger respond on your side, and then just farming hashes by by. They call it crops, I believe, by putting out shortcuts to writable uh, shares that you can access as a computer account or an initial access account, right? And then sort of uh, gathering together those hashes, which I also started doing and had much luck doing. So, uh, sharp shares. There's two. This is the this is what I would define as the original sharp shares. It's great. It has it's two years old now and it has some missing features. Then there's another one. Uh, am I gonna attempt to pronounce Mitch Moser? I'm gonna go for Mitch Moser, uh, who created a more in-depth one that allows you to provide your own LDAP query as well as to define, you know, do you want to look at all computers, only domain controllers, servers, exclude domain controllers, whatever. Uh, and this is cool, but this also is missing a domain tag. So if I try to run this, uh, if I try to run this uh, on this machine in the net-only session, it will fail because it, it, it can't pull the proper domain and credentials from the session because it doesn't have code for it. So what I did is that I stole some stuff from Rubis. Uh, so if I go back here, I should have a folder called custom and then... Oh my god. Uh, bin... Debug. I should have a custom... Uh, Sharp shares that I started working on that basically pulls all the uh, authentication debugging locating from Rubius. So Rubius will first look at the credentials you give it, then it will look at the Windows identity and the current identity, and then it will look at um, like if you have a ticket assigned and stuff like that. So uh, Rubius does a lot more logic in finding out what domain context your session is in. So I pulled some code from that. And this, yeah, so this, this sharp share is actually able to pull, and this works great. So this sharp share is actually able to pull and query, pull the LDAP, uh, pull, uh, pull, um, <laughs> the name servers, uh, I think it's called uh, DNS name server or something, uh, property from LDAP, and then start going through them to see what, uh, shares we have access to. And if you go to Proxifier, you should be able to see them trying to resolve. Yeah. So Proxifier is trying to resolve this domain for me. Uh, and it works pretty good. So this would indicate that I, I have right access to address. So I could go plant some seeds there using MDC, MDSEC crop. So, and tell them farm. You should really, if you haven't read this, you should definitely look into it. So farming for red teamers. It's a great article. I'm going to post this in chat. I'm going to also post Odvar. Odvar's original proxy fire uh, setup. Odvar's proxy fire. Odvar, trust to say. Oh my god. AD Explorer. Trusted sex. There you go. I'm gonna post that as well. Those are both solid reads. And especially the AD Explorer one. I mean being able to who I mean it's so funny because this this is a sysadmin tool. 
and you grab a, a snapshot from it so you would be able to look it up offline afterwards it doesn't create those as an unnecessary queries uh, so you should definitely looking into doing that okay so other C sharp tools that I love so there's another one called yeah definitely look at that so there's another one called um, uh, sharp hose which is pretty cool so sharp hose allows you to spray the domain uh, in a super easy way because it pulls the uh, usernames uh, automatically as long as you have one authenticated user so let me so this is still running by some reason so it's finished i might i might uh, make a make a pull request to the to the uh, the second sharp shares uh, repo for this uh, adding the ruby authentication stuff because i could definitely see this being used in a net only session or whatever anyhow uh so yeah uh, if i go i can do i want to show you this repo sharp collection sharp hose it's this and this supports non-domain joint spray so you can give it a domain and a username and password this is really nice so I guess this is by, oh my God, am I even gonna try? You stay ready? Yeah, you stay ready. That isn't even the name. Oh, is this, this is the same guy who did Firefox, right? Awesome, Black Hills. Uh, so that, that, those are those. Uh, I haven't really used sharp map execute yet, but I can definitely see, see it come in handy when you're doing basic stuff. If you want to try to do reflection on the target and uh, uh, crack map execute is, is too slow or otherwise inaccessible. And then LDAPR isn't here because there isn't a sharp tool though. Any of these I find myself using? Yeah, yeah, ob obviously. It's Sauron's eye. This. This is gold. So, okay, let's say you discover freaking, you know, 10 uh, shares, whatever. There's so much data there. You, you you don't want to or you don't have time. Oh, he does. Okay, that's cool. So oh, you don't have time to go through every single file and try to find interesting stuff. Lo and behold, Sauron's eye. So uh, Sauron, Sauron, whatever's eye. It allows you to search through, uh, you know, Word documents as well as normal text files for specific keywords. And it does it super fast. So I could easily see myself targeting multiple networks drives with this and just looking for keywords. And this is actually, Olaf, since you're here, this is an awesome blue side thing as well. If you want to see if your network shares contain sensitive information, try to search for them. Put in your main network share drive and search for the keyword password, search for social security number, you know, try to look at that sort of stuff. Because this is something that definitely saves me a lot. Oof, a lot of time so i'm guessing this is not going to be able to access those shares without a domain name so i might have to edit this as well to be a non-domain join aware but anyway sarah's eye 10 out of 10 uh, who made that vincent Oh, cool. Well, your colleague is very talented then. Yeah, it's an awesome tool. Yeah, you can do 50,000 files totaling 1.3 terabytes on the network drive in under a minute. Yeah. So it's, it's actually, you know, <laughs> it's, my, it's much, much quicker than the Windows Explorer search function. So definitely take a look at that. Definitely use that a lot of times. But yeah, so I mean, the end of the day, most, uh, I guess, a lot of sharp tools 
are meant to be executed on the target machine either because they do some sort of persistency some weird ass recon uh, you know whatever it might be but a lot of the sharp tools like this can be used on a non-domain drone machine in an only session and that's what's so great because they don't have to make some weird process on the target machine suddenly use the dotnet runtime clr right um because i i mean we have uh we have our own little version of uh of, of execute assembly internally and never had any issues using that against a bunch of solutions uh but for whatever reason it might be the only beacon you have right and you're super afraid of losing it you doing something like this might be better uh yeah so it turns out i don't know why explorer isn't being uh isn't being might not be explored themselves doing the connection because what i did last time was i removed this because i was testing no 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 definitely right so uh that's that's another point so say sharp hound if you're not very specific about the commands you give it it will actually drop a cache file and at the end of the command it will also drop a zip file for theta anyhow right so dropping anything on the disk these days could be a major risk so just being able to run sharp hound over a Sox proxy uh, is great. I mean, uh, especially again, if you use the uh, the uh, the DC only collection method, uh, it's it's not silent or selfie by any means, but it's a lot less no lot 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 less noisy than if you don't do the DC only. Uh, the noisy part starts to come in when you want to, when you try to enumerate all sessions on all the machines. Uh, that's noisy as frick. Yeah, so yeah, let's go back there. So let's remove this from the host file and then let's try this again. So I'm guessing it's cached now. Yeah, 100% cached. It gotta be. It has to be. Because I ain't seeing Explorer popping up here, which is a bit weird. I can't recall if I saw that last time. Weird. I guess Explorer isn't the one that actually doing the lookup it's uh it's probably spc host tell us what, now i can't talk i i so i have an internal project i think i tweeted tweeted about it uh, like a couple of months before i started trust and sake uh, that i wanted to release but it has become so big and we use it for so many things internally right now that I, it's not going to be released. I, I think I'm planning on releasing it sometime in, uh, I mean, if, if I, if I could submit like a paper to DEFCON 2022 and release it there, that would be a dream, uh, for sure. But it's, uh, I, I so want to show you guys so many thousand lines of code. It's like, it's my, it's my private, it's, it's nothing like Rubius, but like in the terms of the size and the use case. And how big it's gotten everybody knows what it is it's my sort of it's my rubius you know what i mean it's it does it has nothing to do with that functionality but it's my just based on the size it's my rubius and i can't wait to show you guys but right now we want to uh yeah we want to keep that close to the chest as of now which is boring who wants to just teasing at this point right I haven't that would be pretty dope to graph it out right so i haven't looked into the ad explorer file format myself i don't know if other i have i did look into the l dapper json output uh, because i often i i while sharp hound python hound or whatever it's called right so bloodhound has a collector in python that works it works but it doesn't really i'm sorry it doesn't it doesn't really do much more than that um it's not it's not great so i would i would imagine uh using a more modern tool like ldapper uh and then having a sort of a sort of a converter from the ldapper which is basically just ldap converted to json uh straight into blood and would be super dope ldapper is really quick as well uh how hard can it be that's the that's the kind of thing you say to yourself before you start a tiny, uh, tiny project, and then you sit there for two weeks and goes, "Oh yeah, it was that hard." Yeah, it turned out, 
It's going to dominate your life. <laughs> uh, yeah. Sto yeah, I know what you're talking about. 100%. The freaking... The Rustificator. Yeah, right. So, uh, AD Explorer, I mean... We have a high, I have other had other uh, I mean Olaf be my guest dude that would be freaking amazing. <laughs> you promised I'm gonna next stream I'm gonna hold you accountable I'm gonna say like Olaf told me he was gonna convert AD Explorer to Bloodhound, so I mean he should be done any time by now. This time next week he's done. Yeah, it it goes from it goes zero hundred real quick just like my freaking. Rust Fuscator project. It was supposed to be a two part maximum, ended up at five parts and having to restart at part three or something. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to whoever watched those episodes. I'm sorry. <laughs> 10 mins, man. <laughs> I think Rastamas can talk about that as well in terms of his. Um, he started the, uh, the Sharp C2 series. It just goes on and on and on. Yeah, it really does. <laughs> you stopped though. You stopped, right? I'm just trying to come up with some more tools here. Yeah, so you can also use Mimicast, Mimicat, uh, pass the hash. Uh, if you want to get, if you don't want to use net, net, uh, net only, if you don't have a clear text password, you can use pass hash or locally on Mimicats as well using this. But I mean, who's going to be the first guy to just solve all our DNS issues and make uh, SOX5? SOX5 reverse. Who's going to be the guy or the girl? I don't know why I say guy. Could be anyone. Freaking alien. Don't care. Who's who's going to be the 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 living organism? <laughs> who's, yeah, I, I agree. I think Olaf should. I mean, just converting AD Explorer into Blondhound isn't enough for Olaf. He definitely needs more. He needs more to do. He he pretends he's a busy guy. Rumors are he has a lot of free time. Way too much, actually. So I think he needs a second project. I think he needs uh, he needs to implement SOX 5 in Posh, Empire, and Covenant. Preferably at the same time. In a short period of time. That would be great. But I, I fully expect uh, Rasta Mouse's Sharp CT to have SOX 5. 100%. You can just next stream, next stream, Rasta, you're implementing SOX 5 if you didn't know it. 100% you are. And what's nice about this is, uh, yeah, we talked about EDR solutions and stuff. <laughs> Uh, EDR, but this is basically just network traffic. So your typical EDR solution might not be able to pick up, uh, um, pick up specifically that you know a proxy, uh, a verse socks proxy is running in a process on the host. Easy, uh, but then again, a network sensor, some sort of ATA or whatever, might be able to pick it up right as suspicious traffic. Uh, but then again, it's going to be really confusing for the defenders if they get an alert that this machine, uh, somebody runs sharp pound on this machine, they can't find a single trace of uh, the .NET runtime being ran in any process. They can't find anything on this disk in terms of the Bloodhound cache file or whatever. Global Strike should probably have SOX5 soon though, right? I don't know if I have so much more to show you guys. Any suggestions at all to what to do the next time I stream? I mean, I strongly prefer to do, you know, uh, shorter topics instead of longer ones. Because the longer ones do tend to people, you know, get thrown off very quickly. Yeah, I know. Stream, they are, they are generally hard to do.
Oh my god. Buffs. Oof. 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 That is so, so out of my comfort zone. Like. <laughs> I mean, so it's funny you should mention because uh, our one of our internal dev guys is actually doing a buff course for us right now. He held like a internal buff course for some clients and he's, he's doing the same course for us. But uh, you know what? With how Cobalt Strike uh, is going at the time, I think, uh, I think we're going to see a lot more professional uh, companies like the one I work in use Cobble Strike. I think they're going to go with how hard uh, these um, APTs are abusing cracked versions. Everyone and their dog has freaking Cobble Strike these days. What's the point of paying for it? Like, I, I get we didn't pay for it for the secret sauce. We paid for a stable tool. Right to get the latest version, but I mean it, it takes like three months, and then the latest version is out there cracked anyhow, right? CS still, I mean CS is still good and all. I'm just saying, you know, with the price tag, definitely if it increases, uh, rumors are it's going to increase. Um, then you know why not just. Have you seen the amount of work BC Security is pulling into freaking uh, a freaking uh, Empire these days? They made a freaking C Sharp agent for Empire. They're doing stuff every day and it's open source. And if you want to get it a bit earlier, then you just freaking purchase a, like, a sponsorship license. I'm just saying with the amount of work some of these guys are putting into these open source tools paying the price tag for CS becomes less and less attractive every day. Yeah, that's a that's affirmative right there. So I mean I uh, ha being being able to customize more more easily in terms of what comes out. I mean you can you can do a lot, a lot of stuff with Cobalt Strike. I'm by no means a Cobalt Strike expert. I think I would go to Adam Chester if I wanted to do like he did a blog a bit back about doing uh, runtime changes to the beacon based on the client environment and stuff. But Cobalt Strike still seems like a black hole for me. Like in the Empire, with Empire and Covenant and uh, Porsche DC, I can go in, I can read, I can modify, I can customize my own agent uh, completely based on something uh, and then use the framework on top of it. If Co Cobalt, we can't do that. We basically have to wrap it as a shell code and deploy it anyway. Yeah, we can we can change a lot of uh, uh, like behavior parameters in terms of uh, what processes you spawn into, how what API call, API calls it should make to do injection and stuff. But but and and obviously uh, the net, the traffic parameters. But like the yeah, we we can't. There there's like uh, you still have to wrap it and deploy it in memory. With Empire uh, and C, uh, C uh, all of those are like C sharp and Power stuff now, right? So it it, it can't really be. Um, you can't really compare it that well to say Cobalt Strike because it's native. But still, I mean, if I if I were a startup company today and I was doing pen testing, there there is no way I would buy for buy Cobalt Strike. I would I mean, pull up. I would pull. I would pull Empire, make some modifications. It's good to go. Or Covenant, or Parse C2, or any of the freaking 50 C2s that are out there. I think Empire is impressive just because of the amount of work the developers are currently pushing into it. I mean, I... Um, yeah. But it's definitely going to be uh, about, uh, some discussions for people who who have a Cobalt Strike license right now. I think within the next five, six years, we're going to see a lot of companies jumping off the Cobalt Strike bandwagon. 100%. 
Uh, yeah, so another thing, I guess I can show you that. So uh, another thing, if I go back to my VM here. So I talked about it uh, earlier that AMC fail now is in pure uh, job S, meaning that you can actually look and confirm what produces your PowerShell snippets for breaking AMC. It's still basically undetectable. Uh, it still works super easy. It's awesome. If you want to use an API, I know Empire is using the API. If you want to integrate it to your tools, whatever, uh, you can go at the GitHub page. And I've set up a Cloudflare worker now that runs job S. These two right here. If Cloudflare hasn't taken them down. Okay, I'm probably doing... No? No, there we go. And these... The thing with these is that they can do 100,000 requests a day without me having to pay a single dollar. So go spam this all you want. If you, if you make me pay for this, I'm going to be amazed. I'll do it. Like if you, yeah. So uh, take a look at this. It's freaking awesome. Feel free to integrate it. Uh, I uh, I told the guys uh, Empire in recently integrated Amstifel directly into their payload generation stage. Uh, and I told them that, sure, you can be free to use it, but you should really put up a disclaimer about, you know, end of the day, if my Cloudflare account gets compromised, your beacons are suddenly going to be controlled by somebody else. If this is included with them. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, that would be... I, uh, yeah, that would be insane, actually. I don't know, I haven't checked the numbers on how many people actually use AMC fail, but I mean, uh, a couple of days ago, I saw it pop up in, uh, oh my god, I want to pronounce the name correctly, give me a second. I saw it pop up in, uh, is it James Hammond? Really? That's awesome. I think I want to. Uh, he's a huge hack the box guy. Oh my god. It. No. James Hammond is the guy from Top Gear. <laughs> um, it's John, right? It's John Hammond. I was so close, though. A lot closer than Adam Savage from Lost Stream. So, uh, in one of his recent videos, he was like, he mentioned Dancy Fell and he used it in his videos and stuff. So, I mean, I think it's. I think they there's definitely a use case. People are definitely using it. Um, yeah. People love it. The people want more. <laughs> yeah. Do they though? <laughs> I'm just waiting for the day where Defender fixes the whole AMSI stuff. And we're all going to be fucked. <laughs> Nobody's going to be able to, to deploy any C-sharp payload or PowerShell snippet at all. Just just wait for it, though. It's been years, but just wait for it. As soon as they do fix something, Rustamas is going to be uh, pulling up his debugger. He's going to be finding the new offset and the new value to override to get around it. But, uh, I mean, the solution to AMC is no AMC at all. Because AMC is, uh, I mean, the, the design for... Who the who decided that the the the, pro, the like the library capable or the, the library responsible of ingesting stuff to determine whether or not it is it's detected should be in every user process and therefore user accessible and accessible by the process running it like that's like, uh, yeah, I don't know what to say. There's a reason most anti-cheats load as a driver, right? Yeah, if they if they make a proper kernel implementation, we're fucked. We would have to rely on, uh, you know, uh, the freaking, uh, the, uh, what's the classical, isn't it MFI afterburner? Some old drivers, some signed drivers that we're, we abuse to sort of load into kernel. We would have to use that basically to be able to defeat it. It would be way harder, way harder. Imagine if 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 something uh, in kernel land of AMC were to be implemented. Macro out of the window. PowerShell, fuck no. C sharp gonna be difficult, right? 
we would have to we would have to go back to obfuscation because that's what we did before before we did obfuscation to get around the signatures now we patch mc to remove all signatures so in terms of both powershell and c sharp we would go back to obfuscation heavy obfuscation that would be the uh, yeah Yeah, that's right. So that's a good point, NetBuy. So uh, MS, according to MS, this isn't a security boundary at all. Then what is it? Like a joke? Well, what is it then? Defender for ATP now has an alert for MC bypassing. Good point. Yeah, UAC as well, not a security boundary, no, that's just something we had in there for fun, right? And they basically just given up on UAC, they don't fix those anymore. If you're reporting UAC bypass, it's just, it's, they don't fix it at all, it's, they're, they're not interested, which is pretty insane. Um, yes, I wanted NetBuys, you wrote, since 2016 they haven't fixed it, so it will take a long time as it's not a security boundary according to MS. Uh, and then I think, yeah, so Alexander, I think Defender for ATP has an alert now for AMC bypasses. Interesting. So there's been, I haven't played around with ATP in at least three or four months. I did a solid round with ATP back in January, December, before I joined TS. And there's, uh, I was surprised when they freaking fixed DLL side loading. So way back in like December, you could DLL sideload and it was all good. And now they started added, add, adding detections for DLL sideloading. So if you DLL sideload with ATP, you have to get, you know, you, your DLL is loaded into process. And then you have to escape from that process quick, like immediately. And then either shut it down or unload the DLL. Uh, that's the only way I've found so far to get around ATP. Because ATP is not going to flag a signed process doing code injection, because that's fairly normal. Like if you look at logs and stuff, if you, for, just look at Teams, Teams is is you know running like twelve processes and they're talking to each other and they're injecting into each other and uh, it, there's just a clusterfuck. Perfect, perfect place for uh, us attackers to hide. And again, it's Microsoft. It's a Microsoft made product. It's so funny, right? Bo. Yeah, it is an orgy. It's like a freaking Microsoft, uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, Electron orgy, right? It's built on Electron, isn't it? Yeah, it's just so funny. At least Outlook is installed properly, as in not in app data. Yeah, Chrome as well, just freaking a clusterfuck of processes. Just, and I, I generally would like to know why though. Is it too, is it too sort of, I generally don't know why. Is it, the, is it because you want to have, if you have a hundred tabs, you want to have a hundred Chrome processes running? Like what's the, what's the, what's the deal there? That sounds logical. I have no idea. Also, a huge shout out to Martin for doing the, uh, for doing, he, he did basically the whole transfer to JS. He's a buddy of mine. Uh, be sure to check him out on Twitter. Great guy. It sounds, I mean, sandbox related, sound, yeah. Mumbo Jumbo trash. <laughs> <laughs> Mumbo jumbo trash, Electron Man, Jesus. I'm sick fail four. What is this? Oh, oh, what is this? Converted I'm fail into a four solution so it can be called from PowerShell. 
Ah, that's gonna be a pain though, because Omsi fail. I remember the Azure function having to run on a Linux host because the AMC failed solution is detected by Defensor, Defensor for actually, Defender, because it contains a bunch of unobfuscated AMC bypasses. Um, damn, I can't speak, AMC bypasses. Um, have you guys played with the uh, sharp past the hash? Oh my god, what's it called again? Sharp name pipe past the hash? That's a long one. Seen that yet? Oh my god, Bing doesn't even know what it is. God damn it, Bing. Awesome, thanks so much for joining in, Rasta. We really appreciate it. Really? Google? What is going on? Thanks a lot, Olaf. Really appreciate you logging in. Watch your language, hello file. <laughs> I'm kidding. Probably didn't even say anything. Isn't it this? I was 100% sure it was sharp name pipe past ash. Named. Oh my god. Really? Really, get up? Really? Yeah, that was bad. So my understanding of this is to be able to basically make token without high privileges, right? Okay, no network identification though. So you could use this to access specific files from another user on the machine if you have access. But uh, I mean, if you can't use it over the network, it's it sucks. Or it, like that sucks. You gotta be a catch, right? Hey, what's up? Yeah, I guess I could show you guys better execute assembly as well. It's uh, so again, it's it's cobalt specific. Uh, let me try that again. Better execute assembly. This one. So basically, it's uh, Cobalt Strike Execute Assembly just with a lot more jazz to it. So it's got the ETW, which is nice. And it also Im uh, implements both static syscalls. Uh, I'm guessing that's for the actual uh, getting the .NET uh, or getting the NetAssembly or CLR actually up and running. And then it also does some, it does stomping as well, right? Yeah, stomping. This is pretty awesome. You should check this out. So I can give you a quick demo of this since I did have it up and running anyhow. So uh, do I have standard beacon running? Yep. So first of all, we gotta go and load the script. So uh, script manager, and then I should have it right here. Gotta compile it first. That's kind of sad as you can't uh, download a pre-compiled release, but 
that's how it is so you got to download uh, the project and then compile the solution there should be two solutions either the 64-bit uh, syscalls which obviously would only work on the 64-bit host and then the 32 to 64 bit uh, version, which doesn't use six calls, but uses nothing, I guess. And then uh, you can do some stuff. So I think he has a bunch of examples in his, in his GitHub post. Yeah, this one recently. So uh, the reason this is nice is that you can on after the beacon has spawned, choose what process you want to spawn into. So uh, these are common targets or common processes that would normally ha have the CLR in them. So these are processes that are uh, um, already .NET or in some way or fashion needs the .NET CLR to function. Therefore, from a defender perspective, any of these processes running with .NET CLR wouldn't be wouldn't be weird or wouldn't stand out. Uh, and then you can choose a bunch of stuff basically. So if you want to do um, so I think the one I used is this. So I played played around with the turtle monologue uh, recently, or before the stream. Uh, so you basically give it uh, .NET assembly, and that's just the path to a uh, .NET assembly on the attacker machine, attacker Linux machine. You give it some arguments. In this case, the argument is downgrade through, which will attempt to downgrade the uh, okay internal monologue. It's basically a, well, a way to get the Entelum v1 hash. Oh, try send me on Discord. Uh, I haven't fine-tuned the rules for links yet, and bias. Send me on Discord. Uh, right, and then we chose to unlink modules, patch AMC again, and patch ETW. And that should technically work. And since this isn't, this isn't a high privilege uh, shell, we won't be able to get uh, the downgraded version back. So, um, so execute assembly at least on Cobalt, I think, if I remember correctly requires you to spawn a new process to inject into. So you could always look for that. Um, I'm not a defensive guy though. So, I mean, my knowledge into detection is fairly limited. Sounds like Shadow File has a better explanation than I have. I just break stuff. <laughs> right. So my my question would be I'm pretty sure this will be caught. Let's try though. I just want to show you how you can actually use internal monologue. Pretty sure this will kill it. Let's see. Okay, make token doesn't do that. Okay. That worked. But it didn't downgrade properly. Why didn't it downgrade? Hmm, that's weird. I'll just uh, start a new high integrity session and just to show you the downgrade one. So basically, Internal monologue allows you to grab the NTLM v1 hash 
if it's a, so if you're running in a high integrity uh let's say you're running as the um let's say you compromise your user through phishing right uh, the user has a local admin you're able to bypass uc and you're able to get a, a high privilege but then you were just able to get some so i'm just trying to find a way where that's Can't really, I can't really, can't really uh, like make up a, a scenario right now that makes sense. Because if you do have high privileges, you're gonna dump the Sam. Anyhow, let's try. <laughs> Let me just grab a bypass. Let's do this one. Bada -bee, bada -boop. Oh my God, come on. There we go, thank you. I'm um, safe, fixed, and let's get another beacon. Beacon should be connecting, uh, 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 connecting as the domain administrator, not the local one. Let's use Snoop Zero, and then let's try to do this again. I want to show you guys how we can use crack case with SH with this. So there's uh, there's this awesome blog post that I always end up going to to explain or to show the differences between. Okay, I probably need my own search menu to find that. This. This is a great explanation between the different hash types. So you can effectively recognize what you have and what you can do with it. So one of the things I always look for, or uh, almost always look, end up looking for down the path, is to see if I can use spool sample together with a downgrade attack to get the entry on the one hash. Because if you can get the NTLM the one hash of either your computer account or user account with a static challenge, you can use crack.sh to get the empty hash, which you could use for patch the hash. So when using input spool sample, I believe it's called the uh, something along these uh, these lines. God, I gotta change Bing. I promise you, next stream, I'm gonna remove Bing from all of my VMs. GitHub spool sample. God damn it. There we go. This basically. Actually, on an engagement a couple of weeks back, the one of the domain controllers had spool sample enabled. And that same domain controller allowed for a downgrade attack. So I was able able to um, request uh, or force the spooler service on that domain controller to authenticate to my attacker Linux machine and then downgrade that authentication request to an NTLM v1 with the static challenge. So the challenge needs to be, uh, where is it? 112234455. One, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five. Uh, why is there no example of this right here? So for I think on crack sh they actually explain it. That's right. So in responder you basically set this static challenge. You do dash dash lm to say I want to try to downgrade the, the authentication request, and then you get something like this in. If it's if you set this and you get an ntlm v1 hash, crack sh will crack it almost instantly for free even if it's a computer account if you don't know computer accounts i think by default oh i can't recall the character length of the password of a computer account by default but it's like it's it's like i think it's at least 60 characters or something somebody i don't want to miss both but i think it's something something around that it's by default just way harder typically to crack than a user account hash but it doesn't matter because of magic rainbow tables with that specific static challenge uh, so that's what I wanted to demonstrate. So if I go back to my high privilege session and then I perform uh, internal monologue to get the, hopefully get the downgraded hash from this computer. I suddenly have both the Bruce Wayne and the NTLM1 NTLM V1 hash. And this is important because I can, this, let's say, 
uh, this is the this is the main administrator, right? I can just copy this and then I can head over to uh, crack.sh, get cracking, do uh, empty hash. I don't know, is it, is it LM hash? I, I never recall what's it, it's empty LM hash? Uh, I mean, in terms of NTLM1, they're always going, so, yeah, isn't that the whole uh, respond challenge thing? That's why you said a static challenge, so you sort of get around that. I don't think that's an issue for NTLM1. Uh, empty hash, is it? I, I, can, I never can recall, so it's empty hash. Then it's going to be free, and you, then you just give it an email. I'll just give it a temp email for now, since this is a local domain and nobody cares. So you can see what it looks like. So I'll just copy this, and then I'll give it there. Submit for free. And then I should get like a confirmation. So my cracking job has started. And then in like a couple of seconds usually. Refresh? Oh fuck, did that kill my email? No, look. And then if we'll uh, crack this using rainbow tables and give me back the anti hash, which I can use for past past uh, past the hash attacks, basically. It's basically uh, basically almost the same as getting the plaintext password in an AD environment. You can you can pass it to everything else I'm signing and it's good to go. There we go. Result. So this is the anti hash usually referred to as NTLM or NT hash. Then I can use this and I can go say, I can do spawn as, I can do uh, administrator. And this might get caught though. Pretty sure this will get caught. Uh, so I could do make token here again. Now I already did that, so it wouldn't make any sense. But yeah, you could use this hash to to uh, say use crack my execute. So we can try that. So user would be administrator, and then hashes big H should be this. And then this is really slow, but it should work. Oh my god, this is so slow. I should have realized how slow this is. Crack Mac execute over proxy chains is freaking slow. Actually, am I even using the correct proxy chains right now? Yeah, looks like looks like it's working. One more four four five, and then it should say owned pwned. So I guess internal monologue is specifically useful if you're somehow either on the machine that the that allows for NTLM downgrade by default, meaning that you don't need a high privilege uh, high privilege session to to set the reg key to get it to downgrade or if you're by some reason on a high priv session and you want to get uh the entail mv1 and you don't want to get it from sam basically oh come on there we go it says owned all right, so then you could do dash dash NTDS and you can dump the entire domain.
Actually, I don't want to show that. <laughs> but you can. <laughs> Believe me, you can. Uh, I guess, right? Uh, but then... Yeah, 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 for sure, right? Because... Uh, yeah, right, right, right. Because that wouldn't be managed by... Oh, no, Elsass. Okay, no, so... So with Elsass... Yeah, yeah, right. So if you don't want to hit Elsass or Sam... For sure, man. It's what the DCs do. They sink, right? So how can they see if I want to sink? Oh, okay. I was unaware of that. But then it's definitely an alternative to Elsass. As well as an alternative to Sam. Because since you can set the static challenge yourself, you're basically... You're going to get that anti-hash and you're going to be able to use it. As long as, as long as you're hard print, basically, right? To get the proper downgrade. Or if it's set, could be as well. Damn, this music is... Can you hear it? It's pretty good. I think uh, we're going to slowly end it on there. I mean, if you guys have any questions and stuff, want to keep chatting, I'm all down. But I, I don't, don't have much more to show you. I was out of content like half an hour ago. I'm draining you guys. This is one of those times where I I didn't have enough content for the stream. Last streams I had more than enough to do and I had to stop it because my brain started boiling. But this time it was more sort of a chill session, just showing off some stuff. Oh, so I, I'm actually, I'm using, um, I'm using, what's it called? Monster Cat. So it's licensed to both me and my YouTube channel, so that should be totally fine. But that's a good sign though, because that means the music... It's so good that you didn't think it's royalty free or paid for, which is good. So I'll, I'll anyhow, I'll take that as a compliment. Speaking about music, what happened here? But yeah, definitely check out my YouTube channel. Uh, trying to grow it as much as possible. If you're into, if you're into like proper C sharp coding, you should check out my Rostfu Skater uh, playlist. Basically, trying to build up uh, a source C sharp source code obfuscator from the ground up. But first two par parts, it goes pretty quickly, and then in part three or two, I can't recall, I run into some major issues and I have to sort of start all over again. But at the end, in part five, I think part five was the final. Yes, I did up. Be, I did up. Uh, I did end up getting a project that could successfully obfuscate the seatbelt and some other, and I tested it against some other few uh, smaller projects as well. Definitely needs more you know, polishing, but it's definitely take a look at it. It's cool. Make sure, may, I mean, take a look at it and make a freaking pull request if you wanna make it better, right? Let's all contribute as a community, guys, and girls. But I think that's going to be it. For today seatbelt is awesome it's been a while since i found myself having to use it though but uh i guess that's just more of, of what i do in my work really appreciated you guys streaming and we hit we had some pretty good numbers this stream as well so i really appreciate all you guys uh, and girls hopping on Thank you so much. Be sure to join me next Sunday. I have no idea what I will be doing. If you do have any suggestions for next Sunday, be be sure to hit me up on Twitter uh, or Discord. Also, join the Trust the Sec Discord. Sort of assuming everybody's already in the Trust the Sec Discord. But but if you're not, be sure to join the Trust the Sec Discord. Let's see if I can find the link. There we go. Be sure to join the Trust the Sec Discord couple of streams will keep me busy for a freaking year dude boffs is oh it's not my thing would be cool but oh not my thing at all i do think doing uh you know less hardcore coding streams might attract more people though uh so i i mean yeah tips or tricks or whatever tool demo whatever anything and any suggestions you guys might have hit me up on twitter or discord 
And thank you so much for joining in. I really appreciate it. Hopefully, I see all of you next Sunday. Be there next Sunday. I guarantee you something cool will happen. I don't know what yet, but something cool will happen. Techniques. Noted. Noted. Awesome. I'm going to tune off, guys. Thank you so much for joining in. Next Sunday, same time, 3 p.m. EST. See you there. Thank you so much for joining in. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday.